living the COVID dream, my friend. Andrea is having trouble getting in. She's, uh, hold on, I see her. Hold on. Hello, Andrea. Hey. God, it feels like forever. How, how, how are you? You know, just like in a COVID repeat of the day. I just been living the COVID dream. I was I was hearing all about Tara's COVID dream before you showed up. Like a was it like a fever dream or is it actually a COVID dream? Every day is a free fever dream. Um, Dan, how's everything going? Um, I'm doing okay. Working uh working a new job, just trying to stay busy. Yeah. Kids are getting old. I'm getting How old. old. So I'm managing this cafe out in Highland Park now, and I had my first real uh, real life like, oh my god, I am oldish dirt moment when we hired a line cook who was born after I graduated high school. Uh. Try auditioning for people that young. It's the freakiest thing. And then what you're going to find now are like your doctors are younger, so much younger than you. You're like, what? That's weird. That's like, what? you can't tell me I have cancer. You're like 12. <laughs> fuck you. You don't yeah. get to tell me that. No. Get the fuck uh -uh. out of here. <laughs> so how old are your kids now? Um, Oliver is, oh my God, how old is he? He's seven. And, uh, my daughter Audrey is six, and then I get this. My my son Matthew is going to be thirteen in May. Wow! Wow! How is that possible? You're only twenty three, right? You well, do look young, though. You look really young. I've been like twenty three, going on seventy for the last ten years. So, kind of, it checks out when you really think about it. Yeah. So, I mean, you're both living in LA, you're both, uh, you're both working actresses. Uh, we're in the middle of this pandemic where, you know, production was shut down for the most part, basically everywhere until very recently. How have you both been occupying your time? A lot of drugs. Awesome. Uh, Uppers or downers? Uh, both. Okay. Like at the same time? Well, Dan, I don't want to give him a cocktail. Um, I don't I'm just like saying, like, vodka Red Bull does that. <laughs> true. It's like, nothing. what could possibly go wrong? Nothing, absolutely nothing. No, I think it's been, um, uh, it's been a very bizarre time because, you know, I think it was terrifying to even think about going back to work, about what that would look like. Um, and then uh, I'm actually working on a show right now, and it is super bizarre. Oh, wow. And at the same time, after the second day, you kind of get used to it. And you're like, well, I just, I, look, I'm not great facially anyway. So when, when people have a mask on, I just like, I'm not even going to pretend to try and know who the fuck they are. Um, <laughs> So I do a lot of, hey, you, because I have no idea who they are. Um, but yeah, it's it's a very bizarre situation. And yet they're going to such extremes to make sure that everybody's safe. We are tested every time we we mm. breathe. So it's that I feel pretty safe about. But it's bizarre and it's weird. And I think that uh, I, 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 I can only speak for myself personally, but I really look forward to the day that we don't, we can stop doing this. Uh, Cause it's just, it's, it's weird, you know? It's strange. Have you, like, it's pretty bad out here in Chicago. From what I understand, it's like worse in LA. What, uh, what is like being outside like on, you know, in the middle of like weekends when it's typically busy in so-called normal life? Well, in Los Angeles. In the beginning, I think everyone was sort of bum rushing the supermarkets and hoarding. And then it was a ghost town. It felt like Los Angeles at Christmas time. It was sort of mm. glorious. The traffic, birds were chirping, <laughs> butterflies returned. And I think we were all in this sort of bizarre, wouldn't you say, Tara, for like four months, three or four months. And we weren't even have that hit in the beginning. And then we started noticing, oh, people are starting coming out. Like we're lucky in LA, right? It's sunny, it's right. warm. So people come out and they, they're walking their dogs, they're jogging. It's the joggers. There's a lot on the Nextdoor app about joggers without masks. Um, but then we had that spike 
And then you've got this crazy sort of divide where some people were like terrified to leave their house at all. Other people were like, it's the outdoors. That's what we should be doing. Yeah. Um, I, so I found a middle ground. I have a dog. I have to walk him. Oh, I wear yeah. a mask. But if someone's not around, I would take it down because I think fresh air is good. But if anyone was within 40 feet, I'd put it back on. Um, and now, listen, from what I understand, Orange County, you can go anywhere, do anything. It's a totally different mentality, right? It really depends on how blue or red your, your district is, how people are behaving. And it's just um, a lot of rebelling against the mask wearing. Los Angeles is sort of in the middle. They just reopened. So you can go dine outside. They're pretty respectful of space. And mm. you wear your mask until you're eating because COVID doesn't spread while you're eating. Sure. Not. Absolutely not. I heard that. Um, Tony Fauci actually stated that. Tony, Tony you, you're calling Tony now? You guys that close? I like this. That's nice. Awesome. That's nice. Tell him I said what up. <laughs> what up? What up, Tony? Um, so is Chicago is more dense than LA. What? Chicago is more dense than LA. You guys are more New York, right? Where people, a lot of foot traffic. LA is a lot of uh, car traffic. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's interesting because um, I don't, I don't even know how to describe this. Like we're, we're careful when it's convenient for us. And then when it isn't, it's just like all those rules go out the window. Like, it's like what you mentioned with, uh, you know, taking your mask off when you're eating. It's like, uh, it's like the pullout method of COVID. Like, <laughs> it just, uh, like, I'm going to do this and hope for the best and pray to God it works. And if it doesn't, I'm going to be really upset with everyone but myself. Right. <laughs> right. It hasn't COVID made you, like, slightly less, I don't know if I'm less tolerant of people or... I sort of liked the isolation. Is that wrong? I kind of was thinking it. I miss my friends, but oh, I do. I'm antisocial as fuck, so it's kind of worked out for me. Right. right. And, uh, you know, Zoom is so much better than Skype, so I'm glad that came out of it. Other than that, I, I know it's taken a toll on, you know, people's finances, people's relationships, and, like, I wouldn't wish this on my worst enemy otherwise. No. Mm -hmm. no. I will say Tara had her finger on the pulse about Zoom long before COVID, and if you listen to her, we'd all be mad. Hold on, tell me about this. I need to hear this. Well, I just I was I was a very early Zoomer way before the pandemic, Dan. So I'd like to say huh. that I was fingers on the pulse of you know of I don't want to say that I foretold the future, but I I I'm very comfortable with Zoom. Is all I'm saying. One could say you invented it. <laughs> I uh, actually have business cards made that say that. So Tara Karzian, Zoom inventor. I love it. She actually made Zoom her middle name. So I had I had a very like, you know, a lot of people have been like binge watching, you know, series and rewatching shows. And the both of you have shown up multiple times on series that I've rewatched. Like, you know, Tara, it, it always hits me like, you are in uh, you are in like an opening death scene in Six Feet Under, and you both exist in the Shameless universe, so that's fun. We do. We do. So, even though I warned them not to hire her, even though like I was two years before you, Andrea, but I said, guys, look, do not hire this one. I gave them a picture. I said, but they hired her anyway. I mean, I, I mean, Andrea, you you got to give William H Macy some good news, but Tara, you got to fire Emmy Rossum. So, like, both of you got good moments. Well, yeah, I mean, I do get to work with like, Billy H, which is pretty cool. How was like being in a one-on-one -on -one scene with you know somebody as iconic as him? Was it intimidating? Like, tell me that meeting him for the first time experience. I'm talking about William H. Um, he was very nice. The set is a little intimidating because they've been at it a long time. Yeah. They all know each other. And you're like the new kid at school and they're tired of introducing themselves. <laughs> like, fine. But, you know, so you're there. And I'll, I'll be honest with you. I, when you audition for a show like that, you get the role and you sort of go in going, that's what they want, right? I gave them the right. audition. I went in and did what I did for the audition. And the director's like, no, 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 too funny. Take it. And I was like, oh, and then I panicked a little because I was like, but that's what I did. You thought it was funny. Um, so, and they were, the Video Village was like way off. So he had to scream it across 50 crew members like, Andrea, 
don't do that. <laughs> do it, anything but that. I was like, oh, shit, okay. <laughs> so that was a little intimidating because you're with William H. Macy. Being yeah. From across. Um, but it, other than that, it was a great experience. I remember, did you have this, Tara, when I showed up to set? Nobody greeted me. I didn't know where to go. Did you have that? Were you on location? No, you were You were on location. No, you were not we were on the lot. We were on the lot. Because, uh, yeah, Tara, you played, like, Fiona's boss when she was working for, like, a sewage plant or something. Like, something pretty early on. The, the cleaners, you know, the... Yeah, the, yeah, yeah. Sewage, great, like... Yeah, we did murders. We did all of it. Oh, I love the tattoos they gave you. I had a tattoo. Yeah, anyway. so that was I, that. Was I vividly remember the both, like you and Fiona, being like knee deep in human feces for. I was like, "That's my friend Tara over there." Yeah. I know her. And it was, um, yeah, it was, it was really good. But the tattoos were my favorite part because they gave me three tattoos that you never saw. I saw nice. them. I saw them. There's a scene, I believe it's on your reel, because I think I just watched it, where you can see hints of the tattoo. Like that? Like that? Yeah. No. And I think you should consider getting them. I'm actually going to have Dan's face put right here. And then zoom on the other one. <laughs> OK. What's going to be on the other wrist, though? You got to have something for symmetry. None yeah. of your wax, and I will let you know. But you don't No, I'm sorry. What the? You should be so grateful right I now. I absolutely am. What you is my name? You can, you can have my name. No, I'll, I'll, it's going to be a surprise. Did I just ruin my chances of having my face on your wrist for the rest of your <laughs> God, God damn it. Yeah. He is like the runaway bride. You say one wrong thing, you're done. I respect that. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I'm, you know, thank you both for coming back on. It's, uh, you know, my podcast is uh, coming up on its fifth anniversary, and I always like you two were you were on like the third or fourth ever episode, and yeah. I had no idea how to interview at the time. And I actually just re-listened to it the other day, oh, and it? I absolutely loved it. Like, just what just kind people you are, because there is a very specific moment where I'm in the middle of a question. And I'm just fumbling through my words, not making any kind of sense. And it's clear that you both realized that I was in over my head and I knew it. And you two just like riffed for a good 10 minutes. I don't think I said a word. And I was just like, oh, you guys are too good. I appreciate it. Well, we, we're riffers. Appreciate we, that. Honey, that's what we're here for. And um, look how far you've come, Dan. Now you're a master. Potter. Master it's Potter. Years. That's pretty damn cool. I mean, I mean I've. Last that long. What should we give you for your fifth anniversary? Oh, the tattoo. Forget it. Yeah. yeah. Okay, got it. I'll, I'll get a matching tattoo of both of your faces on either wrist. That's so cool. Or like on either side of my back. Tara, who's ever offered the, why the stink face? Who's ever offered that to you? Yeah. Before? Whatever. He's like so many people. <laughs> Dollar. Did you, did you happen to see Mr. Carcian on uh, American Horror Story? Who I'm did I? Going, did you? Wait. Are you American Horror Story fan? I've seen Murder House and um, what's the other one with uh, Coven? Coven, mm -hmm. the one with Stevie Nicks. Oh, okay. So Tara was in the '80s one, and I'm just oh, gonna. Oh wow. I'm gonna throw this out there that I think somebody somewhere has a tattoo of Chef Chef Birdie on their some on their body. That's amazing. Well, there was there was a lot of fan art and and a couple of people dressed up as as my character for Halloween. So that's amazing. Yeah, that's really cool. It felt really good, and it's probably one of the most. And Andrew, I think you'd agree, it's one of the most glamorous roles I've ever done. As far as uh, I use the photos, the stills from that production for all of our um, promo material now because she looks so glamorous. There you go. That's a lie, Dan. I look hideous. If you have like a 10th anniversary edition of BFFs, you could just superimpose Tara's face from American Horror Story on the BFFs poster. That's and it's not lying because it's still the same actress. Yeah. 
You're not quite wrong because we are re-releasing BFFs and Andrea actually did send me the picture uh, and I was like, wait, what? And then I found out she was kidding. But oh my God, I pulled it off the internet. They gave her like a moles, right? And um, yeah, they just made her look extra, extra adorable. And so I, we had to send some promo shots in and I asked, I asked for her approval uh, for this one picture. She said no. I said no. That's just me. Um, yes. Never be afraid to say no in this business. Tara says all the time. It's like Tara, no Carson. Oh, that's what I'm going to get on the other side. No. Well, yeah, I tried to interview you by yourself when a doubt was coming out and you didn't want to do that. So I see what I see when I'm not wanted. Oh, she gave you a hard no. I gave him, I gave him a, a, a yeah. Wow, Dan, really? You gonna bring that Just up? Calling people out, calling people out. Abby's still this is what the show has turned into. <laughs> this is like a lot, five a, lot, years. a lot of a lot of things have happened in the last half decade. <laughs> hey, gotta, you've changed. You've really changed. And I love I don't, you too, Tara. I don't know if it's for the better, Dan. Let me finish. Okay. Yeah. There's still love for you there. Just it's different. I like the new Dan. I appreciate that, Andrea. I like that he stands up to Tara, calls her out. I like it. You know, a Andrea, like, I, I, I've been inspired by our boy John and his growth over the years. Yeah. I, I actually just had him on, too. Like, what a nice guy. He's a very nice guy. Is Jude's, uh, is Jude's producer. Ah, uh, John. John. Yeah, he, um... I, I've definitely, uh, I, I've stolen one of his catchphrases, which is, uh, it's not as bad as you're making it sound. <laughs> right, it's always worse. <laughs> yeah. My heart the implication is it's better, but uh, it's actually that it's worse, but it's still not lying. <laughs> That's right. Uh, they Are have you two working on any other projects together? You know, you want well to tell we have we have with three other ladies uh, formed a production company. Really? Yes, and we are uh, some very exciting stuff is happening. None of which I can talk about, but uh, we're 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 it's wonderful. It's it's great to be. You know, I, I knew that I loved working with Andrea, so that was a given. But the three other women are absolutely spectacular and. I always use this term, but there's an alchemy there and um, some very exciting things happening. So very cool. Congratulations, you both. Thank you. It feels good. Yeah. I mean, I think after BFFs, we thought about, I think we were proud of the writing we did, but we don't feel like natural writers, right? It was, it's, um, it's fun till it's not. And when it stopped being sure. fun, sort of went, ugh, the rewrites, right? And that's half of writing is doing rewrites. So um, there was a lot of pressure on us, not a lot, but who, who's pressuring us? People asked if we were gonna do a follow-up to BFFs. I think someday we might write something else, but it's kind of fun to focus on um, optioning and other people's work and Trish trying to create things from the ground up that we're not necessarily penning or acting in. It's, it's, it's exciting. Mm -hmm. Do you think you guys have changed creatively in the last year? just, you know, being at home, having more time to think, kind of like reevaluating the last, you know, years of your life, has, has that affected your, uh, affected your creative output? A great question, Dan. Well, five years ago, Dan would have never asked that question. Well, don't act so surprised. <laughs> um, wow, that's a good question. Andrea, do you want to? I, yes, but here's, probably the lame part of that answer. I'm not entirely sure how yet, but I feel a shift. And um, I definitely think the focus, it's about perspective for me and how much. <laughs> oh. Maybe you should. Oh. Here, tilting, tilting. Um, naked guy on your podcast. Didn't that happen on a new show recently? Um, uh, yeah, I, I feel like in terms of what's important in life, and that might be slightly, in, an age thing too, but like just the importance acting had in my life. And if I had a bad year, it felt catastrophic. And then, you know, the world shut down and I was like, okay, right. let's put this in perspective. I still love acting. I still hope to work, but 
a, a, in any other space and time going this long without a gig would have thrown me right off my horse for a while but oh motorcycles dogs naked men aren't you glad i'm on your show um i'm so glad you're here and just in terms of what i want to make sort of changed a little bit i um it doesn't have to be super meaningful. I'm not saying that. It's just, I don't want to spend a year on something that I don't love. Sure. I love horror. I love comedy. I love drama. But there's good horror, good comedy, good drama, right? And I just, there was a time I would spend a year doing anything just because it was working. And now I think I'd be a little more discerning. Okay. Maybe. Tara, how about you? Um, I just think that, that uh, I think if, if, I think I've changed. I don't know creatively if I've changed, but I agree with Andrea. I think things, the uh, things, people, stuff like that, that, that don't, you know, uh, I mean, it's gotta be a fuck. Yeah. You know, as opposed to just, yeah, yeah I'll do why it. Not? Yeah. Why not? Um, but, yeah, I think that that's a really good thing, and I think it, it. I think it also has to do with getting older, and I think you you tend to look at things and go, yeah, I only want to do it if a, if I'm if I'm a little in love with it because otherwise it's a waste of time, and I don't want to. I don't ever want to leave a situation and go, well, that was two hours of my life I'm never getting back. So, uh, so that's why I'm not dating right now. <laughs> yeah. Same. <laughs> I don't you think too like I love this question because it actually makes me think about it but you're when you're before this pandemic I think this happened to a lot of people you're sort of it's not a rut you're just in on tracks right and you do what you're doing and you don't stop and think about it um and then when the whole world pauses I, I just know a lot of people are like I'm moving out of the city or I'm going to stop acting or I'm going to do whatever and I thought, don't make any huge decisions during COVID, right? Because it's too right. weird. As co but COVID didn't last four months, right? It's it's sort of maybe a reality we all dealt with. And I went, actually, kind of the perfect time. The world said, time out. And it forced you to look at your life from a sort of different perspective. And how that manifests creatively, I don't know yet because I, ha I haven't had much of a chance to do anything creative yet. Um, you know, Tara booked her show before the shutdown. So... I think we're going to see a huge, just, uh, uh, I think there's going to be an onslaught of, of art. <laughs> I really do. I think it's going to be a hugely, I don't want to say a renaissance period, but I do think that there is going to, I think people have been so, they've either been developing this year or they've been, and I think we're going to see a lot of brilliant work. I really do. I think. Absolutely. I think, and I think musically, I think all all around, and I think it's especially in theater, because those poor people have literally have everything ripped away from them. So, For sure. um, yeah, I, 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 and I hope people have done a little bit of soul searching. You know, I hope that it's not just about bitching about the fact that we're, we, we basically, our lives have been disrupted. There have been many times in history that people's lives were disrupted, you know, and, so I, I, I think it's going to be a really, I think a lot of good is going to come out of this period. I think best case scenario, you know, of, you know, the people who, you know, prosper through this time are the ones who gain empathy. And it's like, uh, Andrea, what you said, you know, maybe I'm not booking anything, but like neither is anybody else. We're all in the same boat. I shouldn't take everything so fucking personally. Right. That's, that's a great way of putting it, Dan. Yeah. Aww. Well, I have my moments. <laughs> <laughs> you just had one. One every five years. Yeah, and, you know. Right. Like it's twenty uh twenty twenty six. Let's see. Let's see how how that that interview goes. I really hope we still warrant an invite from five people. I hope to still be doing this or like have the time or the resources. I've definitely like. I've been luck. I've been so incredibly lucky, like the people I've been able to speak to, and um, like it's funny because um, it's all of this started. I interviewed like Jude in twenty thirteen or twenty fourteen, like whenever Hyena was coming out, and then all of like my contacts kind of grew from that. Like Andrea, I met Andrea. I met. 
uh, you through him, and then Tara, I met you through Andrea, and do you then still love doing it. Hmm. Do you still love doing it. I do. I do. Like I started as like an excuse to have conversations with people who I wouldn't have any business speaking to otherwise. Like you know, how else am I going to like run up on you know? actors or writers or whatever that I admire and be like, hey, let, let me ask you questions about your life and I don't know you and this isn't weird. <laughs> That's oh, speaking great. of business cards, all I, of that yeah. is on my business card. <laughs> the whole thing? That's pretty Just impressive. the whole thing and my resume. It's how, why I'm working here now. But uh it's a huge card, Andrea. It's it's yeah. Tara, what can you talk about your show? What's so the, what's your show that you're working on? Or yeah, Tara, that's that's who I'm asking. Well, I didn't sign an NDA. Uh, um, me, sorry, I'm gonna move this because my internet connections. You just want to keep um, showing different views, and I love that okay. about you. Here's I, me back. I am working on the morning show on Apple TV. Ooh. Ooh. So yes, so I've been doing that and it's been, um, it's, it's been, as I said, weird, but kind of wonderful and interesting and, and, and yeah, so that's coming up whenever they release that. What's, oh, uh, what's it about? Uh, the morning show is on Apple TV. It was their flagship show. It's Jennifer Aniston and Reese Witherspoon and... Uh, it's about a morning TV show, like a good morning America. And it is truly the, the first season. Oh, nice. I shouldn't probably be saying this, but I watched the first episode last year and I was like, oh, yeah, it's nice. by the third episode, I was hooked. It's, it's a perfect show. And um, Steve Carell's in it. And, and uh, Billy, Billy Crudup, who won the Emmy Award this year for the show. Yeah, uh, he uh, almost famous big fish. Yeah, I know that dude. Uh, he's absolutely amazing in the show. The cast is truly extraordinary. It's it's a uh, it's it's kind of a yeah. It's nice. great. You actually turned me on to that show before you booked it. I was a huge fan. Yeah, she had the audition. I was like, you need. To... <laughs> I never did something. Like, you better fucking get this part. Yeah, that's Andrew awesome. Really kind of weirdly violent about it, actually. Yeah. 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 It's a fun six degrees of separation thing. I'm actually in uh, the midst of booking an interview with Billy Crudup's ex ex-wife. I might be having Mary Louise Parker on here. Were they ever married? I don't know if they were ever married. They had a kid together. I thought they were married. I don't know if they were married. So Dan, do I have to come on the show and do your research for you? Apparently, just oh. coming completely unprepared. Um. Well, yeah, and why? And why would you be interviewing? Well, not the, Why would you not interview Mary Louise Parker? Yeah, I mean, Angels in America, Weeds. You know, forget about it. Forget, forget about, about it. it. Um, All right, ladies, I want to thank you so, so much for taking the time out. This every this every half decade tradition is one <laughs> I hope we keep up. I, I would love, love to. I'd love, love to hang out with you both in person should the situation ever arise. Would love that. I love your mask. Oh yeah. Okay. Um, oh, I'm sorry. I thought this was a dive bar. <laughs> well, um, we love you, Dan. Happy anniversary! As Thank you so fun. much. Much love to you both. Um, all jokes aside, I admire the shit out of you both. Just keeping it going as long as you have. You know, friendships are hard to keep. Careers are hard to maintain you have mastered the shit out of doing both and i admire the hell out of it so, nice. so you are always welcome uh, is there anything either of you want to plug before we go bffs it's coming back out we don't have a date yet but probably in the next uh, four to six weeks would love people to see it who didn't catch it the first time around four two six or 46. no four either four or six weeks it depends on the the company oh okay yeah, cool. yeah. Cool, cool, cool. So within a month or two. Mm -hmm. I was going to say 46 weeks. That's a really weeks. specific your, amount of weeks. Put in your calendars. <laughs> that would be so creepy and bizarre. And it would yeah. be almost time for our next interview with Dan. That's almost five years. Oh, no, that's a week. Sorry, months. Nah, forget it. Four, two, six weeks. 
Uh, four to six. Do math during uh, COVID. Push it, push it, push it real good. Push what? BFFs. What is it? When it's coming out, Dan's going to push it. Oh, yeah. Dan's going to push it. Thanks, Dan. I'll, I'll be your personal salt and pepper. Oh my God, that's so I'll awesome. be both of them. <laughs> you can handle it. I just, I fit the the profile already. Like it's going to be, it's going to be great. What could possibly go wrong? Not